everybody upstairs. We do it twice a year, sometimes three times. But this is when myself and some of the Godly Play mentors, our teachers, and the children, we do the sermon. And so how perfect that today is Pentecost because we have a lesson in Godly Play called the Mystery of Pentecost. And it comes in a box like this, and inside are all the items that you need to tell the story as we're gathered in a circle. But of course, you're sitting out here, so we decided to make everything bigger. So that box is this box, <laughs> we made it bigger. I have to say, we've used this box so many times now that Jennifer Pearson, if you're in here, you're gonna have to make me another one because this one is on its last legs, <laughs> but, but here we go. So, let's get started. I'm gonna tell the story exactly the way I tell it to the children or the mentors tell it to the children. This looks like the parable box, that box that we've had the parable of the Good Shepherd in and the parable of the Good Samaritan, but it's draped in red, so that makes me think that it's whatever's in there is like a parable, but is not really a parable. So maybe I just need to look inside and see if there's anything to help me. You know what, all I see are the things that tell the story. So I'm just gonna get started with the story. Once there was a great tower. Technical difficulties. <laughs> the people working on the tower all spoke the same language as they built it together. But as it grew taller and taller, some of the people started talking differently. They wanted this tower to reach to the heavens. And finally, they just became so proud of the job that they were doing that they began to think that they were better builders than God and that each group began to say they were a little better than the other group. And pretty soon... All their talking was replaced by this huge noise and nobody could understand one another. It didn't make sense. It just sounded like babbling. And so the tower fell and they called it the Tower of Babel. So now the language of the people of God had been shattered into pieces. Each piece was beautiful, but it wasn't the same as the old way of talking together. Well, thousands of years passed. Thousands. Jesus was born. Jesus lived. Jesus did his work. And Jesus died on the cross. But that wasn't the end of the story because somehow people kept meeting Jesus in this new way. And they didn't want to let him go. And then one day, something amazing happened. It happened in the city of Jerusalem. This is our city right here. And the disciples were there in Jerusalem. So let's meet them. There was Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, 
Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James the Less, Simon, and Thaddeus. Well, there were only 11 because Judas had already died. And suddenly Jesus appeared to them in that new way again, and he took them outside the walls of Jerusalem and took them up a mountain. They went to the mountain called Olivet. And there the disciples saw Jesus go up. And pretty soon the Holy Spirit was going to come down. And so the disciples hurried back to Jerusalem to wait for the Holy Spirit. What was this going to be like? So they immediately went to the temple. And when they got to the temple, they prayed. Then they went to the upper room where they'd had their last meal with Jesus. And they decided that Matthias would be the disciple that would replace Judas. And so now they were 12 again. And all of a sudden, the room began to be filled with this huge noise. And it felt like a mighty wind was blowing through the room. And the disciples began to feel like their tongues were on fire and their bodies were filled with the Holy Spirit. And so they ran out into the streets of Jerusalem to tell everybody what was happening. Well, it was kind of weird because the people in the streets of Jerusalem were from different countries and they all spoke different languages, but somehow they could all understand what the disciples were saying. They could tell that God had come so close to the disciples and so close to them that now they were going to be apostles. They were going to go out in the world and tell the story of Jesus' love and about the story of God's love. And so this is the story of the first Christian Pentecost. But this isn't the end of the story either because anytime you or I are filled with that spirit and have the power and courage to tell that story of God's love. It is Pentecost. And it is like fire. And would my box helpers please come out? Those boxes were handed to me by Evie and David. So they had an important role back there getting the boxes to me. And so we thank you for listening to our story today. Amen. Okay, let's follow them out there. Would you stand for hymn 295? 